Should be this music episode here. of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. Get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. On that note, and there's the music. Hello and welcome, dear friends, to another episode of Super Connectivity. I'm your host, Charlie, the Professor Esser, and with me, as always, is the man who makes it all possible, the hero of the ages. Phil, Phil me and Parrish. That's the man. So, Philip, welcome once again to Super Connectivity. Uh, a couple of things I really want to talk about. Man, and so many things. We've got comics to get to, and I do want to get to our comics, but I do want to do some fan theory first here. Okay. Uh, first one I really want to talk about. <clears throat> so, recently, uh, people had asked the actress who played Valkyrie if Valkyrie could take Killmonger. And, of course, she very quickly said yes, which I think most people agreed with, myself included. Uh, Valkyrie is an ancient warrior of a... Um, of a race of warriors who has had thousands of years of experience fighting. She has increased speed, strength, stamina, etc. I think she could take Killmonger. Now, in my argument for this, I made the point that Loki, that could, saying Killmonger could beat um, Valkyrie is like saying that Captain America could beat Loki. And the answer is yes, Captain America can beat Loki, but only when Loki wants him to. I just got into a whole other debate about how Loki isn't in his guardian, and I and which got to the think yes, it's comparable. You know, um, Captain America doesn't actually have the heart shaped root, but he does have the um, super, super soldier serum, which got me thinking. Someone needs to do a story about a expat Wakandan scientist, sort of a hidden figures concept. This is my pitch. You like hidden figures that there was this Wakandan exile, possibly a princess of Wakanda, who was forced to leave, but she gets into the Operation Rebirth and starts sort of dropping hints to Erskine about um, the heart-shaped herb and what its chemical structure might be, and trying to find this way to make the heart-shaped herb something that isn't just for the royal family, but that we could say that that could heal all people. Because let's not forget. Somehow they got their hands on vibranium. Now, I will say that not all vibranium is in Wakanda or Antarctica, if you go to Antarctica, Antarctic and vibranium. But um, because it, when a meteor hits, it's going to disperse. There's going to be vibranium around the world, just not in large quantity. That's why he says there's like, you know, as much as there is on the planet Earth in the shield. Um, and, and I mean, with the, with the Fox acquisition now, it's going to be, you know... Weapon X is going looking for stuff, and I mean, not everything's gonna be can be has to be vibranium now. We're gonna probably be introducing adamantium and stuff too. And oh, yeah. who knows? Maybe Cap's next show will be adamantium. It'll be uh, a mix. It'll be a mix. Remember yeah, back yeah. in the day in the comics, it was a mix of that adamantium and vibranium. And of course, the joke of that is that actually the whole thing about vibranium is that when vibranium comes in contact with other metals, originally it made other metals melt. Yeah, yeah. Because it was vibrating, because it was a metal that well, vibrated in this way that would make all the metals melt. So that's that's what but, it did. It melted the adamantium, and then it kind of intermingled and cooled. And yeah, of course, what's weird is that when you actually get to the X Men franchise, they kind of made adamantium almost like a uh, almost like a plastic. It was weird. I mean, because it's like oh, it's it's you know when it becomes hard, you know when it's in its liquid form, it's like but they don't say molten; they say liquid. Which is like, well, that's a very big difference between molten and liquid, you know? Yeah. Uh, anyway, but my actual point was, which is, so that was a whole other thing about this hidden figures. Was there a Wakandan scientist on Operation Rebirth? Since they do cross over a lot, you know, I think that there's some, I think that Erskine was, was there, but then maybe this Wakandan scientist in the background maybe help them push over the line, you know, that that kind of thing. That kind of story that the kids love nowadays. Because like I said, somehow they got the vibranium. So obviously someone knew what vibranium was, knew how to get it into the hands of people associated with Operation Rebirth. So obviously there was some efforts. There were some efforts going on here. But here's my point. Because this brought up this whole question of could a super soldier kill 
a Asgardian. Hmm. And I was thinking about because here's the thing, going back to Batman v Superman, you know, or, and more importantly, going back to the original Predator, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Because that whole thing about, do you bleed? That was just him, you know, aping, I want to say Arnold Schwarzenegger, but it might have been uh, Jesse the Body, where, you know, or or um, Carl Weathers, where they say, you know, if it bleeds, we can, I can't, I can't remember which of the three large muscular men, because all large muscular men look alike. I'm sorry. <gasps> um, I'll say it. To get too many muscles, it all blends. It's like pit bulls. They don't have the facial expressions. <gasps> <laughs> Except oh, for Lou Ferrigno, Batman. At Charlie Batman's Esser. Treasure. At Charlie Esser on Twitter. <laughs> anyway, but um, when they say in that, that basically when Batman's asking uh, Superman if he bleeds, that's just a play on what we're going to say Carl Weathers, just to, just to give him credit for it. Why not? Um, says in The Predator, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Um, and the fact of the matter is his guardians bleed. Which raises this question, if Captain America has his shield, or Killmonger has a vibranium weapon, which is something which theoretically could pierce an Asgardian skin, with the heightened speed and reflexes, would that super strength not be as much of an advantage? Now, I still say that Valkyrie's centuries of fighting skills and being a trained warrior gives her the advantage there. Plus, plus being from like an Asgardian, being like from like a higher realm, can all right. Let's say they can each do equal damage. Can would Valkyrie have more endurance? Could she take more injury than Killmonger? Well, she certainly can. Yes, yes. So that's the thing. So basically, what Killmonger would have to do is he'd have to be making a fight that is avoid avoiding damage and getting move. critical blows with his weapon, almost like a boxer. Almost like a boxer, yeah. Well, exactly like a boxer, like Creed. like an like an Adonis Creed, yes. <laughs> yes. You got to got to hold back and then hit. You know this this the rope a dope strategy always works. And so in that sense, Killmonger could theoretically rope a dope um, uh, Valkyrie. But this brings us back to a more salient point to very very nerdy old men like myself in the nineties. Back in the '90s, when BoJack Horseman was in a very famous TV show, there was a little a little uh, comic book crossover called Marvel vs. DC. Yes, and all the Marvel heroes had to fight their DC counterparts. We'll say, if something what makes you a counterpart, I was gonna say if something didn't have counterparts, they just uh, seem like random or like, hey, this guy's popular. This guy's yeah, popular. Well, Let's, well, uh, like, okay, so Wonder Woman. Is Wonder Woman, and she's like associated with the god. Storm used to be a god, and really, I think it was mostly based on comic book sales. Storm was called like a goddess. Wonder Woman is a goddess. Well, she uh, well, she wasn't a goddess at that point. You know, that, then she was just an Amazonian. I don't think I don't think she had the daughter of Zeus. Yeah, right true, now. true. Yeah, I think that's a more recent development. In fact, I know that's a recent development because I think they just did Daughter of Zeus storyline. Mm-hmm. I always thought she should have been the daughter of Ares. I think that makes a much better story, but you know. Maybe they thought it was too edible or Freudian or electrical. Anyway, but getting back to the original story, um, in this great thing, uh, Lobo, yeah, I know who's Lobo, but uh, he was a character in DC at the time. Yeah. I guess he's having a bit of a resurgence in popularity. Good for Lobo. But Lobo was sent to fight Wolverine, apparently because both smoked cigars. And. <laughs> That, that, I think that was literally all they did. Uh, now, I don't know how old Lobo's supposed to be. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know sure. he's the last of the whatever is. Kazarians or whatever, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it it. But I don't know how old he's actually supposed to be. But here's my, here's my actual point. Wolverine has hundreds of years of fighting training, including ninja training. Lobo, as far as I know, rides a, rides a motorcycle. Um... Now, maybe I'm wrong about Lobo. Maybe I'm wrong about Lobo. Maybe Lobo has had, like, thousands of years of uh, ninja training, too. I'm going to guess maybe not as much. But, you know. Um, okay, here's here's the thing. I mean, I, I get you're going to say this is ridiculous, right? Because, I mean, Lobo has fought Superman. Yeah. Superman. But, yes, but Wolverine has adamantium claws. 
True, true, but I mean, Adam I mean, I, I, I know Wolverine Andy has a healing too. factor, but I mean, yeah. and that, that's the thing. And this goes to the rope a dope. Huh. If all you need for a rope a dope is just to stay standing, that's that's what Wolverine does. And you can see Lobo take him behind the bar and basically smash the skin off his face, and then get close enough for Wolverine to go. Oh, by the way, hope you didn't need those vital organs. <laughs> and I'm because, trying to remember, it wasn't even to the death, right? Because it was just, was it whoever got knocked out first? No, it was actually supposed to be to the death. Yeah, but a lot of those characters wouldn't, weren't or killing at the time. Well, well, I mean, it was it was until... It was the, the 90s. It was the 90s. <laughs> it was until the fight stopped, and that's why Captain America and Batman, they were too evenly matched. They got 50-50. I think they eventually said Batman won, like, on a technicality or something. Or their fight was interrupted, you know. I mean, um, yeah, cause, I mean, I mean, Captain America has super soldier serum, but I'm, Batman has more training, I would say, like very, no, very, no. more varied training. There are stories yeah. where Batman took like a decade and learned from like however many people he could he could in that decade. I mean, how how much training did Steve Rogers have when he got that serum? Well, he had at least five years, which is half a decade. Oh, Across all he, the decades since he got unfrozen. Well, I was going to say, he spent decades on ice, though, too. Yeah. And basically, he's been fighting a lot of... He's been fighting ninjas for a while, so... They both have good ninja fighting skills. Yeah. And honestly, ninja, fight, ninja fights are mostly about the ninja staying hidden and attacking. Um, whereas, this is just... No, we're actually both in the ring now, and so let's, let's sure. fight. And, you know, and let's not forget, Steve Rogers was a scrapper, even as a little weak kid, so... Um, although, you know... Steve Rogers' fighting skills have been ex- uh, um, increased over the years. When he first fights the Hulk, he mentions that it's just a simple judo r- move that any uh, first-year cadet could, or any first-year anyone out of basic training could do. <laughs> he throws the Hulk, which yeah. made the Hulk so mad. Hulk does not like people who know judo. <laughs> Hulk hate martial arts. <laughs> Hulk hate martial arts because Hulk don't know martial. arts. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like Hulk, he relies on his strength. He's not a he's not a savvy fighter. You know that would have been a great thing is actually to have the leader actually like learn martial arts because he's super intelligent and just like, oh no, I'm just going to beat you up physically because you have a lot of strength but you really have no knowledge of how to fight Hulk. Oh, but anyway, oh that yeah, that would be interesting if the leader could just like you know Matrix style like download skills into his brain and all of a sudden I know kung fu. <laughs> yeah, now I know kung fu. Yeah, well you know. <laughs> if Whitman can do it, I'm sure the lawyer could figure it out. Because not for nothing, clearly Whitman downloads stuff into people's brains, like all of his clones. They're operational. Oh, yeah, he downloads his whole brain, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, here goes. You're going to tell me Whitman couldn't figure out what what are the parts that know karate. Okay, let's put those in. <laughs> True. You know, and, you know, not for nothing. Obviously, he, get, he, he can build a rudimentary intelligence. He could fill it as he needs. So, because uh, clearly Bentley 23, you know, doesn't seem to have all of Whitman's knowledge, but maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't have all of his memories, though. I don't know. We're not quite sure exactly what Whitman 23 knows, or Bent, sorry, Bentley 23 knows. Um, uh, but we do know that he... Yeah, it might not be a full memory. It might just be a Whitman sampler. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. I'll be here all. I'll be here all week. Yes. Uh, but he clearly has a great deal of scientific knowledge. So, mm-hmm. anyway, um, but getting back to my original point, I could see Wolverine rope doping Lobo because Lobo doesn't know what power set Wolverine has, mm-hmm. and you know, and just sort of get close enough what in his fighting with Wolverine, and not realizing that he's not going to break Wolverine's skull, not going to damage his brain. And get close enough to Wolverine that he can gut the poor guy. And I think that's why Wolverine won. Now, they did a little thing, I guess, where there, it's implied that Professor Xavier bribed uh, Lobo to throw the fight, which makes literally no sense. Because if the universe is going to get destroyed if you lose this fight, why would you take a bribe? Unless they're just saying Lobo is just that dumb. Lobo is a really, really dumb guy. I mean, he's super strong, but he's super dumb. Or, he or, is. or was the, or was the bribe? Hey, if you throw the fight, you can go, come live in our universe. Okay. Oh, oh, that's actually not a bad one. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That's I, honestly why? Why didn't more people offer that? Well, why don't we just figure it out? Of course, that's what got us to the amalgam universe in the first place. 
Mm-hmm. Well, no, but my point is, is I think Wolverine could take Lobo. It, it, it's a controversial su- subject because it was, no, Lobo fought Superman. It's like, Wolverine fought the Hulk. Mm-hmm. You know, let, let's not forget this. It's like, Wolverine fought the freaking Hulk. And who did the Hulk fight in that? In Marvel uh, vs. DC? Superman. Yeah, good guess, because obviously I learned, that's exactly where it goes. So the Hulk... No, it took, me, it took me a second to remember. It's, it's been how it, many years, Charlie? It's been 142 years, but I remember it like it was yesterday. It's been at least 20 years. It's been like important in our lives. It's been over like 20 years. That they are imprinted on our hearts. It was very painful to get that heart tattoo. That's the They say it's the foot, but really getting a, tattoo, a heart tattoo is the most painful. Because you got to go in. Yeah, mullet, mullet Superman versus uh, Professor Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> Basically the worst versions of both. <laughs> well, they had to go with whoever they had at the time because it's yeah. like it was like, so was it Spider-Man versus Superboy? But it was Ben Riley at the time, so it was Ben Riley versus Superboy. <laughs> yeah. I don't really... I, I, don't, I, I don't know necessarily why Superboy is, like, on par with Spider-Man. It's like, I'm not really a teenager anymore. I'm actually in my, like, you know... That's what I'm saying. Some of them, I don't think they had doubles for us. So they were just like, okay, who's popular? Who do we need to fight for? Okay, let's just... Yeah, but with Superboy, we, definitely need Spider, we definitely need Spider-Man in here. He's not going against Superman. He's going to... Yeah, but... Basically, I think that was like Spider-Man's bye week. It's like, <laughs> it's like, uh, we all know Spider-Man's going to win whoever we put him in. Everyone fights Superboy. I think if they could have come up with a legitimate way to do it, they they wanted Superman versus Spider-Man, probably. Yes. Well, they've done that. And yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's the other thing. They've done it before. And, and people would say, oh, Superman has super speed. Spider-Man couldn't possibly beat that. Yada, 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 yada. Because Spider-Sense doesn't do you much good well, against super speed. Well, didn't they kind of have, like, a Superman-Spider-Man fight in that? Because wasn't, like... Well, well, Ben Riley was, like, again, going by the name Peter Parker, but he was, like, trying to... Wasn't he, like, flirting with Lois almost? <laughs> I mean, it's entirely possible. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, you know these amalgam stories. They, they uh, certainly... I mean, you know, but why wouldn't, why wouldn't he? He was single and unattached. And as last I yeah. checked, I don't think uh, Lois had a ring on her finger at that point. I think they... Were they engaged? I don't think I know, they did. They broke. They were engaged, but they did like she kind of called it off for a while. I know it was before the. It was like at least a year or two before the marriage. So, yeah, and not for nothing. If Spider Man flirts with Lois, it's up to Lois if that actually goes anywhere. So. Mm-hmm. Now, if Lois had said, "Hey, peep, yeah, handsome young side of beef," so you know, if Jonathan Kent starts shooting webs, we'll, we'll know something's up. <laughs> well, he's a villain now, so. And honestly, we don't know that Jonathan Kent's, Kent's a villain. He, it may yeah, just be the art no. and the teeth. You know, the art and the teaser makes it seem like, oh, he's got glowing red eyes. Which I, every time we want to say, hey, remember Superman has laser eyes, and that's scary? Which, oh, ironically, you... yes. No, I was going to say, have you been reading Adventures of the Super Sons, which takes place no. before all the Bendis stuff? Oh, no, they're, like, crashed on this alien planet. And, like, I'm waiting for the next issue, because at the end of the last issue, they come across we this was a theme on capes and lunatics they come across what seems to be older versions of themselves so it's i mean like older versions like gray temples i mean so basically old man superboy and old man robin <laughs> please don't please please just promise me that old man robin isn't still wearing a robin suit pretty sure he was like a different I'm trying, it might have been a different version but it was still a robin costume <laughs> yeah i know damien damien yeah. of all people wouldn't be wearing a robin costume at that age yes yeah, no, no. Um, and he wouldn't be still super boy because he's. Well, he didn't call himself. Well, I'm just saying that's who it was. It was supposed to be John Kent, but I don't know if he even yeah. called. So maybe he was Kent calling himself Superman Wayne. at that point. Yeah, yeah. So maybe he put a D and he's, I'm Davey. I'm Davey, you know. Um, yeah. Doing that Hollywood voice. Um, yeah, uh, but, you know, uh, no, I haven't been reading Adventures of the Super Sons. And, um, uh, yes. But, no, I mean, I'm just saying, I think it's entirely possible that Logan could be uh, Lobo. I don't think... Oh, maybe that's why, because they both had four-letter names. Uh, no, Logan has five letters. Um, <laughs> but they both start with an L-O. So, but, uh, they both start with L-O. They both smoke cigars. It's like they're twinsy. Yeah. Like I said, Wolf- Wolverine has fought the Hulk. Wolverine has fought out of his weight class all the time because he can rope a dope. He's got that physical ability 
to withstand injury. Mm-hmm. Which means he can get a power, more powerful villain who is more, who thinks all he needs is his strength to bring it back to Captain America and the Hulk doing a quick judo throw and saying, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to fight. And uh, that's what he does. He tosses him, and uh, I think that's how Logan wins. And So for me, the headcanon is Logan wins. Logan wins. Logan wins. <laughs> okay. Speaking of headcanon, can we just talk about the prelude to uh, Infinity War? Okay. A comic that just came out. Okay, I didn't uh, read it. I didn't read it, so tell me. Well, it's not out yet. So oh, okay, know. okay. Just the preview. And the preview is basically the first four scenes of Infinity War. Mm-hmm. And we see very clearly Thanos clicking his glove, his power stone glowing, and him beating the tar out of the Hulk. All right, so can I summarize for the people listening? All right, everyone. Charlie Esser was right. And that's our drop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we need that a lot because it happens a lot. You wait till. <laughs> you know, like, oh, turns out those were all just AIs that came to life and started killing people. Good thing the only one that actually died was the was Speedy, who we all thought was dead anyway after the whole heroin storyline. <laughs> uh, sorry, Roy. Um. Oh, but, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that there were people fighting me on the internet saying, no, he didn't use the stone, the stone didn't glow, da 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 he just beat him because Thanos is just fight. that powerful. Yeah, fight me, nerds. Well, fight they me, did nerd. fight me, and now the nerds have lost. <laughs> they did fight me, and now the nerds have lost. So, there you go. Um... Uh, that I mean, that's the thing. It's like clearly that was what was implied by it—that he has the power stone. That's how he's able to defeat the Hulk. It's clear that that's why he has the power stone first. You know, I mean, it's it's all established in the story that he, he has the gauntlet. He has the power stone. He can use the stones individually, which originally you weren't supposed to be able to do, but he does because you know the stones said, "Ah, oh, why am I fighting?" All right, radical idea. We changed the name of the podcast from Super Connectivity to Charlie Was Right. Well, I'm not always right. I'm often right. And Charlie is always... mostly right. <laughs> That's a cool name. Charlie Was Right. You know, they were the Cree. They weren't the Atlanteans. I will own that for the rest of my life. You know, I will say, you know, I thought I, I thought the Cree was too easy. I, you know, I thought the Cree were too easy. And, you know, I just. I wasn't sure if that was where they wanted to go with it. And I thought Atlanteans would be a more interesting take because it is something within the Earth. Yeah, I didn't think they were going to go cosmic that soon. They went cosmic right away. All right. Well, since we're on like the kind of the subject of Avengers 4, where's that trailer already? Uh, two days before the movie. You know, here's the thing about Avengers 4. Well, so. I, know, I know. That's what everyone's saying. It's like they really don't need the hype because it's like, who saw that movie and it's like, eh, I don't need to see the rest of it. Yeah. You know what? Here's what I'll tell you. I mean, it, bro- it, broke, it broke records. And, you know, any, everyone who saw it, no one's going to be like, oh, I don't need to see the second half. Here's what the issue is. I think, call me crazy, they're not going to release it until, uh, Super Bowl? until just before, well, maybe Super Bowl, which isn't too far before, until Captain Marvel comes out. Because I think uh, part of the trailer... Uh, yeah, but... You, you'll get a teaser, not the full I think, trailer. I was going to say, I think Captain Marvel's after Super Bowl. Yeah. So yeah. maybe you'll get a teaser, but you won't get the full trailer. Maybe. But the teaser, and the teaser and the trailer may have the same thing, which is that, you know, um, which is you're going to open up with the scene we saw, and then you're going to just see Phil Coulson walk in and say, <laughs> what's the situation? Um, well, maybe that's the end of it. Uh, or that's the end of the teaser, and then that's where we start off with it. Or, or I mean, I mean, the big theory is like, oh, you know, they don't need to hype it. It's so big, everyone's gonna go see it anyway. But is it possible that like they're carefully planning because maybe like I don't want to say this, like ninety five percent of the footage is so spoilerific, they have to carefully pick and choose what they show. Well, I think what it really is is they don't want to. They don't want to step on Captain Marvel. Hmm. Captain Marvel's a prequel. And you want people to know they have to see Captain Marvel 
before they see Infinity War. Well, to, I mean, yeah, but can't... I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying come right out and say it, but can't they play it even as, like, who is this mysterious figure who's coming to help the Avengers? Well, you know... <laughs> Yeah, go to the movies in March and find out. Maybe the teaser for Infinity War is going to be actually a Captain Marvel trailer. Oh, oh, would they? Oh, would would they hold off on showing the the complete trailer? Like they would the first place, the maybe the only place you could see it is on the Captain Marvel movie. Not entirely possible. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. You know, um, not for nothing. And like I said, it's. The biggest fear right now is not to step on Captain Marvel. Because Captain yeah. Marvel has to do well and preferably beat Wonder Woman. Here's what I'll say. If Captain Marvel does poorly, it's not the end of the world. But they don't want people saying that they gave Captain Marvel short shrift. You know? True. True. But I mean, one, I mean, I think the hype's pretty good on Captain Marvel. And two, I'm, well, I mean, some of the, I mean, some of them perform lower than others, but, I mean, would you call any of the MCU movies, like, a complete failure? No, well, exactly. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, uh, I don't even think Ang Ling's Hulk was a failure. Mm-hmm. I think that, I think it actually made its money back, you know. You know, which isn't what you want. You want to make more money. But, I mean, I mean, the, I mean, the full Disney, you know, yeah. no, MCU it, it, stuff, have, I mean. Yeah, I don't think, no, none of them lost money. Mm-hmm. But still, you still want, you know, here's the thing. Captain Marvel, for good or ill, is going to get compared to Wonder Woman. And they want to, they don't want to do something that might make people say, well, I guess they don't need to see Captain. Not for nothing. They have to worry about these fanboys like, oh, women superheroes? I don't know. I don't know. I think everybody kind of knows one. It's Captain Marvel's origin, and she's also playing a big part in Avengers 4. Plus, you're getting young Sam Jackson and uh, Phil Coulson. So. Phil Coulson, yeah. So, again, like I said, I think that part of it is is a marketing ploy where they don't want to step on Captain Marvel. Maybe. But I think also it's just, you know, they don't need to do a lot. They want that. I think the mystery is more hype than the film. Although they they got to be careful. They don't want to bend this it up, you know. Yeah. But I think. <laughs> you know, I, they don't want to call this Tony Stark's father. Yeah. But oh. I think if you do like a decent like teaser trailer, it would help Captain Marvel. Like if you show if you show a lot of Captain Marvel footage. Yeah, well, exactly. That, that's the thing. Although then you know Captain Marvel makes it out of Captain Marvel. Which I guess, obviously, you should know. Captain Marvel survives a, Captain Marvel. It's a prequel, I mean, and, and you yeah. saw him calling her at the end of Infinity War, yeah. so you kind of so, assume she makes it out of it, yeah. So what we can assume... So here's what I'll tell you. Probably on the Super Bowl, you're going to get the teaser, which is going to be... It's going to be... Um, oh, here's what it is. So it's after the events of Infinity War. And you're gonna, and it's gonna open up with that, not the scene we saw in the Ant Man, but the, um, uh, uh, you know, public address warning. Mm-hmm. Like, dee, dee, dee. I, forget, I forget if they did the old school beep or they went with beep, 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 because it's not beep anymore. It's beep, beep, beep. Mm-hmm. So, so those of us who are old enough to remember when it used to be a single tone, now it's like a repeated tone. But, um, it's gonna be opening with that playing, and you're gonna be seeing, um, uh, and what you're going to be seeing is you're going to be seeing a guy going through stuff and trying to find something, and it's going to be, and then it's going to be revealed it's Phil Coulson. Then all of a sudden you see the knock on the door, and it's Captain Marvel, and he, and she's going to say, "What the heck happened?" You know, and that's going to be your teaser. That's going to be in the Super Bowl. So it works as both a Infinity War teaser and a um, uh, uh, Captain Marvel teaser. And establishes that both Phil and Captain Marvel will be in this thing while actually having to reveal anything. That's my prediction. Mark my words. Watch the Super Bowl for that. Or just go to YouTube afterwards. Um, You don't have to watch all the football to get the commercials that we're actually watching this dang show for. Isn't it weird that like football has become the commercials in between the show of the commercials and the Super Bowl? Who who watches football? So I wonder, like I said, the Super Bowl... comes before Captain Marvel, do we get a Captain Marvel and Avengers 4 commercial? Well, you'll get the full trailer, because we've only uh, was that a full trailer or was that a teaser? I'm trying to remember, did we get a teaser before the Super Bowl and then the trailer, or, or was it a teaser? Uh, I don't know, but you might get like a new Captain Marvel uh, a t- trailer, 
but you'll get that teaser. And then maybe after the Super Bowl, just before Captain Marvel comes out, you'll start getting the Infinity War trailers. I'm pretty sure it's the first week of February, but let me look up the exact date of the Super yeah. Bowl. Um, Super Bowl. No, Super Bowl is like in January. No, February third. February third. Ah, so that's what I know. No, I'm thinking of. Uh, I'm thinking of maybe the Rose Bowl. Maybe one of them. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, or the Pro Bowl or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's some kind of bowl. I think it's the college football thing. I think they used to do it. Uh, Sometimes, or, or sometimes it might fall like the last week of January. It's usually like a Super Bowl. I think it's like what last week of January, first week. It, it seems like last couple of years it's been like first week of February. I just know it's always a Sunday. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Of course. So yeah, Sunday, February third. Yes. So um, so that's that. So one other thing I wanted to talk about um, as they as DC because hey, this is the DC week. Uh, we got to talk about DC. Um, as they have said that they are pulling it back from their other projects, Batman and Superman, they've also revealed that they're going to be moving forward with a Zatanna film. Oh, yeah. And that got me thinking about my favorite DC title right now, Justice League Dark. And it got me thinking, you know, Justice League Dark could be DC, could be the way to go forward with a DC extended universe that doesn't deal with the problems of the other films because you can focus on wonder woman and you can bring in bobo detective chimp and man bat as an old batman villain which makes sense because batman's old so that one of his villains is like no, i'm just a scientist now yeah i used to fight batman but that was a while ago i mean he's old he's 142 now so well, you know. well that is a good point it's like yeah that's the way you can bring in wonder woman without having to worry about the batman and superman stuff plus <laughs> I mean, with the exception of, like, Doctor Strange, I mean, the MCU really doesn't do a lot of magic. They don't have, like, a magic team, so. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, what I think, I think what's great about Justice League Dark is that it gives you this separation from the Justice League we've already established while also acknowledging flaws of it. Like I said, it lets you walk away from Batman as a franchise for a few minutes. Yeah. That Batman has this old villain who's now part of this team, you know, makes sense because he's, because Batman's been around for 20 years now. Why did they think that making Batman old was a good idea for the start of a series? I don't know if they were, they were thinking about Dark Knight Returns, you know, the big Batman-Superman fight. I know, that's what I was thinking the other day. I'm like, why make an order Batman? Because, you know, you know, they, you know they always want to milk the hell out of Batman. But yeah, why make an order Batman? Well, I don't know well, if they wanted, obviously they, they wanted the Batman Superman fight. Well, they wanted the Batman Superman fight. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And it's like, so you want an, an experienced Batman? You don't want like a 21 year old Batman being able to be like, oh, I can take Superman. Yeah, well, I, but, you know, I guess more to the point, it, it, I mean, honestly, the whole thing doesn't make any sense. So I think we can establish they wanted, it. They, I don't think they wanted him old, but they wanted him to have all this experience. So, I don't well, know. Well, I think they wanted to do Dark Knight Return. They did. They kind of, yeah. Yeah, they wanted to do Dark Knight Returns. They wanted too many things. They wanted Dark Knight Returns, but they didn't want to do a future story. They wanted a present story so they could introduce the Justice League. Yeah, they, I mean, and they and they shoved Doomsday in there too. That's the that was their problem. They did too much. They they wanted too many things. They tried to rush it. Don't rush. And again, with this three tiers, it's like, what are you trying to? Do? What are you doing, Warner Brothers? Well, is that? I mean. I don't know. Are is it almost? Tra- are they trying for a good business model? Or is it because is it, what is it going to be like? One one tiers DC, one something else. No, no, it's like one is like their TV, two is like their TV and movie, uh, or it's like, or maybe it's like one is their movies, two is their TV. I don't know. Comics, I, I, comics, and the other one. Well, that's what, well, maybe it's, it's, you know what? Here's what I'll tell you. It's too much thinking. I don't want to think. I don't want to. Yeah, do but if, if you're only interested in like the TV shows and you're not interested in like the movies or vice versa, or is that them saying, okay, well, you know, we're not going to force you to buy all everything if you just want, you know, a certain segment, then you can pay a lesser price. Here's what I'm going to tell you. So Netflix right now, which is the most expensive, is like twelve bucks a month. Okay, and you're going to tell me that Warner's can't make it work on twelve bucks a month. Or thirteen bucks a month, or fourteen bucks a month. And here's what I'll tell you: Disney can charge me fifteen bucks a month. I'm probably going to take it to have the full content. 
movies. Because TV, sometimes I, because I want the focus. Because what I want is I want to. The whole point of this whole internet thing is that I don't have to wait, and I can. It can. It is not an inconvenience. If I have to go, here's the thing. If I have to do something else, I might as well just go to a movie theater. I might as well just go to Blockbuster, for goodness sakes, you know? <laughs> that that <laughs> last one. Yeah, I might as well just go out of my house and do something if I'm going to make me do something right now. Mm-hmm. And you want me to have, like, three different tiers for content that you all own. Yeah. And you're going to put this, like, wall between the content that is related. It doesn't make sense. So I think what Disney's doing, as far as we know, is having, like, Netflix one locale. You know, Netflix and Hulu, it's, like, one locale. You go mm. to that, you pull it up, and there's the, there's what we asked for. There's what we're looking for. And we can go to it, and it's enjoyable, and we it, we watch it. And um, Well, you, do they, do, do, yeah. does, War, does Warners think they're more attractive because they're offering this option, maybe? What they're trying to say is, we're not going to make you pay for comic book movies if you don't want it. So, problem, is, so it's them not having faith in their product. Yeah, basically. Basically, it, basically what... It, Here's the thing, like the whole argument about like a la carte cable mm-hmm. was, was always like people saying, I don't want news networks because you give me like eight news networks and I don't yeah. want to watch any of them. I don't want any sports networks. You give me eight sports networks. I don't want any of them. I want this channel, this channel, this channel. I want comedy, drama, and naked ladies. Well, is that, is that Warner's view? Is it like, well, you know, that's why people are cutting the cord on cables because they don't want 50 million channels that they don't yeah, watch most of them. They're not, they're not producing, they're not producing sports and news and, and they're not producing like three different genres. They're producing one thing. They're producing scripted entertainment or maybe reality entertainment. They're producing entertainment. They're not producing because that's the thing is sports is a different genre than entertainment. Warner, Warners, come to us. We will fix your problem. Uh, you, know, you, you, you know the old, we have a Hulk. We have a little hellfire. We can fix your problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we do have a little hellfire. We can fix all the problems. You know, and here's what I'll tell you. You, you got to, here's the real thing. You have a little hellfire, just have a Phil and a Charlie and a Tyler. We can be moderating forces on each other. That's the thing. Got like different, one person got go di- nuts. Yeah, different different age age segments, different worldviews. I mean, yeah. Well, sort of different age segments, you know. Well. Lilith you know, is our youngest number. Let's be honest here. Lilith, Lilith and Tyler in their 30s. We're in our 40s. And... Yeah, exactly. So right in that meaty part of the demographic. No one well, who do you think they're going after? Who has the money? I assume millennials. Or not millennials, but zillennials. Zen- Zen- yeah. I think my kids apparently have lots of money because they're talking all sorts of things about what they they, they want to buy. So. Yeah, and then who are they coming to? Who are they coming to for Charlie? Who are they coming to for the money, yes, sir? Yes. Uh, anyway, but uh, uh, but no, but I do think that. So here's the thing: Guardians of the Galaxy was a big hit for Marvel mm-hmm. because it broke the mold. It was willing to take risks, and it said, "What if we did a film with a talking raccoon and a giant talking tree?" And a wrestler with who a green wrestler with big red tattoos, and we'll put some schmuck at the lead, and it, it'll be good. And this is what I think when I look at Justice League: Dark, it's like, oh, they've got a kind of a wisecracking, cynical, furry person in Detective Chimp. Mm-hmm. You've got this big, kind of weird-looking person of few words in Man Bat. Um, now, I Man Bat doesn't say I am Man Bat, but you know he actually speaks rather eloquently. We don't want to be too obvious, and I think that Detective Chimp and Man Bat, along and heck, yes, yeah, so we can throw in Swamp Thing and um, uh, and uh, and Constantine in there for 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 thing. But you have you have Zatanna and Wonder Woman, and Detective Chimp and Man Bat. And honestly, the last episode with with Man Bat, the last issue where he's like, "Oh, I want to learn about this magic thing." He's so fun. He's so fun as man, and I love when they keep him as like in the man bat form, but in like the lab coat and like you know, it is such a good look. And DC has it. It's like make that a movie, DC. And I hope they're going to do that. I hope that what it looks like they're doing is what they're going to do, because I want uh, Detective Chimp 
a book bag for my kids. I think I think my kids would love Detective Chimp in a in a film. Same way that everyone loves Rocket. It seems like they're making a Detective Chimp push because, like I said a few weeks ago, in Batman Secret Files, there was a Batman Detective Chimp story. He's been in Justice League Dark. Um, I thought he was somewhere else recently, but yeah, I mean, it seems like they're making a Detective Chimp push. Yeah, well, they have been because he's kind of cool, you know. He's mm-hmm. and you know what I love about Detective Chimp is that he's mm-hmm. not just a. I mean, he has been a character, but he's like. Especially in Justice League Dark, they really deal with the fact that he's a super intelligent chimpanzee yeah. who is very who is very good at deducing things and who drinks, which is my favorite part about him. And he owns a, a, a an interdimensional bar, so he owns an inter- So right there, you have an interdimensional bar, a talking chimp. It is it is DC's Guardians of the Galaxy, and it is what they should do next. So. <laughs> Dark, the new one. I, I, I never read the first one. I mean, I saw the movie; it was okay. Um, you know, but it's like I think that there's something really strong and interesting they can do with that. And I think that I'd love to see that. Okay. Uh, do you want to go to comic books, or do you have anything else on my list? Nah, I don't think you gave me a big list. But no, that sounds fine. Comics is good. That yeah. So let's good. talk about because I just read it. Bitter Root. Oh yeah. How was yes. it? Yes. Uh, it was very good. I gotta say, this guy Berg. Don't see it here, but you will actually read the comic books. Berg is definitely meant to be David Walker. I, I'm just going to say right now, David Walker, the Berg is a David Walker pastiche. This is, Berg is how David Walker sees himself, which is great because he's a cool character. The same way that people say that, like, read David Walker on the phone. <laughs> the same way that people say that David Walker, or the same way that people say that Stan Lee is like, that Reed Richards is like a Stan Lee pastiche that Stan Lee always saw himself as Reed Richards is like essentially as the smartest man in the room. <laughs> um, but it's really good. I mean, uh, and I'm just going to give you the last image of it. Man. That's the last image. Uh, that right there, that, that's everything you know about. That is great. I mean, it's got this great thing, you know, uh, you know, uh, you have this fight monsters. Uh, you have Grant and the family. The women do this and the men do that. And the daughter's like, no, I want to fight. And she's like, oh, you're just like your mother. And that's what got her killed, yada, yada. Hmm. Um, we got this interesting side group of people who apparently know about monsters, but maybe aren't in on the thing. So they're, they're cool. There's something going on there. On, and the art, not for nothing, the art is really fantastic. Is that a mini series? Is that a mini series or an ongoing or? Uh, as far as I know, it's ongoing. Okay. Um, what what issue is that? This is issue one. Issue oh, one, is it? Bitter okay. Issue one. Cool. Yeah. No, oh, no. This was on the pull list for a while. I've been waiting for this. Okay. And then I didn't get to read it for like three weeks. But so, so like issue two will probably be in next week's episode. So that'll be uh, great. Well, I was gonna say. So there's only been one issue so far. Okay. Yeah, but this is a uh, Walker Brown Green Renzi and Cowles, and I guess. So jump in, on the ground, and, jump in on the ground floor, people. <laughs> yeah, what I can say is I think that uh, the artist, yeah, um, who is the artist in this? Uh, I, um, I can never read credits, right? But, but it's this, I, I, oh, here we go. Um, I don't remember who the uh, artist was on um, the Luke Cage uh, Power Man series that David Walker wrote. Oh, it was um, okay, it was yeah. it. Was it was it was that Sanford Green or was it somebody else? Or uh, I think it, was, uh, it sounds that sounds right to me. But I, I'm yeah, yeah, I, yeah. But I know who you're talking about. I remember you the read art that style. Yeah. I didn't yeah, yeah. I but, remember the art and style. You see the other work style is very similar, and it's actually what I'll say is, and this is my thing, is that I didn't think it worked as well for um, Luke Cage, but and maybe that's just because I'm in Luke Cage in first off. If Luke Cage doesn't have a tiara, I don't know why I'm one. I'm just saying it. Oh, yeah, but um, I thought I mean it's it's a really good series. I really liked it. Um, I'm glad I finally got to read it. I'm looking forward to reading all the rest of it because there's definitely a cosmos and a mythology here, and I would not be surprised if we don't see a Bitterroot movie in like two or three. Because that's the turnaround time now. You come up with something that's a hit, they make a movie of it. Oh, yeah. Or a TV um, show. Yeah, yeah. Something, yeah. Um, oh, you want to talk uh, Fantastic Four? 
Sure. Fantastic Four number four. Fantastic Four number four, you know. Um, wow, they're doing Invaders, too. So Defenders and Invaders are both back. Oh, but hey, I think we bar- I think we forgot to mention it. Buried the lead. Who's back in the Marvel Universe? Uh, Philip. Conan! Who's finally back? Conan! The Barbarian. Oh, look, we can get like some in- 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 Yes, Conan the Barbarian is back. The Hyborian Age returns. Um, what more could you want? Uh, ex- you know, except Conan in in the Marvel Universe. I mean, I hope Disney can hold on to him. You know? Because, mm-hmm. honestly, you know, I want... Conan's books were always better than his movies. This, this... <laughs> and that includes both the novels and the comic books. You know, Conan was a great character. Oh, that's the thing. Hey, what's going to get some comic book? Oh, uh, well, uh, Wolverine the Long Night podcast, yeah. Yeah, so that's going to be a comic book, so... That might be interesting. I don't know. Um, might be a fun else world. But anyway, Fantastic Four. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel 100% about the Future Foundation and Professor Powers going off. Aside from the fact that it is just one more meaningless honorific. We're Dra- going to call you a professor now. Le Basel, Le and Dragon Man and uh, yeah, Alex Power go off with the kids. Okay. Yeah, well, and now, and I get the idea that, you know, we're a family, we're going to go do this, and um, all this kind of stuff. But it's, first of all, I just love the fact that they really emphasize how meaningless the honorific of professor is. Oh, <laughs> we've decided that you're a professor now. Oh, we'll file the paperwork when we get home. Oh, it's like, paperwork for what? To whom? What is he a professor of? It's. Yeah, well, it's like it's it's Reed and Sue. They're not a uh, an institution either. <laughs> exactly. It's like I mean, maybe there was some tax tax filing that made the Future Foundation an actual legitimate thing, and so they can they can appoint him professor of the Future Foundation. Well, that's so well, Professor that... Power and the Future Foundation, which now I I want as a spinoff book. <laughs> what well, I, I want that... Professor Power. Is, yeah. that, is that just Dan Slott saying, yeah, I don't want to deal with the Future Foundation right now? Well, or maybe he's saying, hey, maybe maybe actually he wants to deal with the Future Foundation, but he wants to do that in the separate book as Professor Power in the Future Foundation. Maybe. But that, is, that just is such a comic book title. You know, um, what's weird about this, though, and just to, just to call it a show for an entrenching tool, so all of the Future Foundation has been out for five years. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they've all been aging for five years. Everyone on else on Earth has not. So when Professor Power comes back, it is all of his all the rest of Power Pack will be like, "Why are you so much older, Alex?" I don't know. It's, it seems weird. I don't know if it was just the art, but like in the nineties, he was on the New War. Yeah, it was him on New Warriors, and he seemed older, but now they yeah. seem younger. I don't know. I. Well, you know, Gwen Poole has made that point, is that with aging, you never really age unless it's all at once for a book, you know? I mean, or, um, or, or Frank, I mean, look at Franklin Richards aging. I mean, event, watch, they'll get that eventually, like, watch that five-year aging will wear off of all of them or something, where they're like, oh, we're sick of Reed Richards with the beard, let's de-age them again <laughs> or something. Well, yeah, but they can still keep, they can still keep um, Valeria and Franklin True. as... Uh, that was the whole point, is just getting them out of that awkward phase. Mm-hmm. phase so they can work with that. Uh, and then, of course, they moved to 4 Yancey Street. That's our new headquarters. Mm-hmm. What did you th- What did you think about that whole thing about letting that new group, the Fantastics, keep the Baxter building? I kind of get it, but it's like, did you really vet these people? Because remember the last time a team took over, uh, like, what well, was Four Freedoms Plaza? But remember the last time a team took that mm-hmm. over, the Thunderbolts? Yeah. That didn't blow up yeah. liter- literally in everyone's face. Well, you know, I guess what they're... And I guess here's what Reed is saying. And they don't know these people. Not, they could be villains. Well, they, and clearly they are. Uh, well, I guess what they're saying is they may well, not con, be villains. They're con artists, at least. Well, or, or maybe just their promoter was the con artist. Maybe. You know? Say on this, is that Essentially, maybe Reed just don't care. He's like, and, maybe, and maybe, as the Thunderbolts example, he's like, you know what? Maybe even if these guys aren't heroes, 
if they play heroes long enough, at least one or two of them will want to stay heroes. Maybe. So, you know, fine. You know, and it's not like Reed Richards can just buy back the Baxter building. Yeah, I was going to say, what money I mean, does he have? Well, I mean, yes. Or, or as we get to in Marvel 2 and 1, Reed will just invent something. I know, yeah. Johnny. <laughs> yeah, he'll just invent some patent. We'll be rich again. Don't worry. Then he burns the coat. It's like, just after this, just like three minutes in, he wears the coat. And it's like, Johnny, you've got a self-destructive streak. I don't know what it is, but there's something definitely bad there. Um, I don't like the offering the villain more money to, to quit thing um, as, as, as a resolution, except that it's a nice, quick resolution. I do Dave, like that Davey and Wayne has done that. <laughs> What are they teaching these su- these children of superheroes that you could just buy off your problems? Oh. Well, to be fair, you know, I'll be honest with you. It actually worked in the Venture Brothers. <laughs> when, uh, I know, but again, it, if, if these people are villains, you're just handing villains money. You no. know? Here, you need a death ray. Oh, here's the money. We'll pay you off to throw this fight. Go yeah. buy your death ray. I'll tell you this. Valerius made a, a, a bad villain in the Wrecker. Because now the Wrecker wants revenge on Valeria. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. In fact, I would not be surprised if you have a series of the Wrecker trying to get the money out of Valeria at some point in the future. Everybody and killing people. The, you know, you know, the 40, $48,000 because they had promised him 24 and it's $1,000 you owe me, lady. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all I want is what you promise. Uh, I mean, it was it was okay, but um, well, actually, my favorite thing is is the statement that we're going to look for the molecule man. Yes, uh, the dragon man in the future. They're going to look for the molecule man. Which, but I mean, I like that statement. But does the molecule man need your help? I mean, eventually, he always pulls himself back together, right? Well, exactly. And more to the point, more to the point. Uh, <laughs> He is a villain and has been a villain for like a long time and was actually like central to the Beyonders plot to destroy the universe. Well, so, again, again, like you were saying with these new characters, that he was working with the Future Foundation. Do they think maybe they're on their way to rehabilitating him? Because, I mean, he would be a powerful force for good. No. Well, I mean, but you know what? Sometimes a powerful force for good is actually not as good as you think. You know, you and well, again, you go to old is it is it is it more of taming him? Like, oh yeah, you can't just like deconstruct universes and. <laughs> let's well, you know what? Here's what I'll say. He's a very mentally ill man. But oh, you know, like I say, like Batman, well, if you don't remember, is a powerful force. For good. Old man Harley, old, old oh. woman Harley, yes. old lady Harley. Sorry, uh, is a powerful force for good, but he's also basically established a fascist state in Gotham. With Bloodhaven as the uh, as, you do. as the um, as the as you do, and with Bloodhaven as their uh, city city prison. So um, so having this great, I think it's really just that you know he was a friend. And honestly, here's what I'll tell you: he was the most. Here's like if you really want to say about if you want to think three dimensionally on this story, they're looking for Power Man, or the story they're looking for the Molecule Man because. Owen Reese would be very sad if he pulled himself together and no one was looking for him. Exactly. And That's then what, he that was, might turn, yeah. That was my next point. You really want a villain, especially one that powerful, to come back and say, You didn't look for me! <laughs> Exactly. I mean, so that's, like, I think no. that's what Han- I think that's what Hank Pym Ultron did. He was like, No one came looking for me. There, everyone was like, We thought you were dead. I wasn't dead. <laughs> yeah. Well, Hank Pym Ultron. He's just Hank Pym in general. Hank Pym. No one's going to look for him. <laughs> Yeah, we kind of we're kind of glad you died. No, no, not for nothing. Um, so, but so, I actually I I enjoyed the Fantastic. They're they're great. And what did you think of uh, Marvel Two and One Number Twelve, the last issue? Uh, we got your old buddy uh, Mole Man. Mole Man's back. I, you know what? You know what I didn't like about it? It was just all a little bit of two. And well, that wraps up that story. Um, we get Racina's like I've decided not to be evil anymore. Hope that oh. hope that's okay with you all. Well, they kind of well, they kind of gave her what she wanted because Reed was like trying to, you know, cure her sister. Yeah, but, which is of course just yeah, because that's worked out so well for Ben over the years. <laughs> well, she's not covered in orange rock, so I mean, yes. 
and Ben wants to be there, as, as we've established. And and as and as we were talking before, it could it could it be an easily as a fix as like cloning her new body or something. 1940s technology still works, you know. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Ben Riley figured it out. I mean, Otto figured it. I mean, Reed Richards should be able to figure it out. Everyone is figuring it out except for the guy who's like known for clones. The Jackal, like, yeah, yeah. The, except for the Jack- and I kind of get the feel like everyone's like, like, just don't tell him. Don't tell him. It's a great joke. Just don't tell him. No, no, no. Don't tell him. It's so obvious and he's just so stupid. Don't tell him. Oh. Well, I mean, they, can, they you can kind of explain it because, like, you know, kind of retcon, like, supposedly the high evolutionary gave him bad data or something. I don't know. Well, yeah, but you. But here's the thing. If you're a scientist and you have bad data, you might, like, try to figure out why the data's bad. He's not a scientist. He was, like, a college professor. Again, college professor. <laughs> yes, granted, that isn't really what's on horrific. But he was still a scientist. I'm saying... I'm saying he was a man who worked in science, which makes you a scientist. <laughs> Again, he another was a, cr- he was a crazy college professor who had an unhealthy crush on a student of his. Uh, he only threw himself in the cloning to say, hey, let me bring back that hot blonde uh, girl I was l- lusting after in my class. Not the sanest person. Really Marvel made this book? Yes! <laughs> that started yeah. the whole clone thing. Val Warren was Peter Parker, Gwen Stacy's college professor. She dies. He blames Spider Man, and he's like, "Oh, hey, let me bring back that hot blonde." That's the whole foundation. Why did he bring back Peter Parker though? What? Why did he clone Peter Parker though? He basically brought him the clone. He cloned Peter Parker so the clone would kill the real Spider Man, and then he would have a Spider Man who Uh, obeyed him. Yeah, I see. And then in the nineties, he was going to kill all of humanity and make. clone doubles, so, you know, th- that way the whole world would obey him. Hmm. Wasn't that actually Scarlet Spider's whole thing? <laughs> he was trying to help, but he was still kind of off the rails. But Yeah, yeah he's very off the rails. Oh, okay, so that's been Riley. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, t- so you thought two and one wrapped up too neatly. Well, I mean, I, not so much. Again, like I said, the whole, I'm gonna just buy this coat, and, because we're loaded, and again, Two ep- two issues back to back where the answer is we're rich. What do we care? It's like wow. Why do why do one percent the superpowered people in the world? Um, you know, you want to know? You don't want to know why people hate superpowered people because not not because you have powers. It's because you're also super. Th- that there's a few of you who are super rich and really want it. Yeah, I know. That you're super, a superpowered person, you're rich. But I think the theme of this issue is supposed to be kind of be like, oh, the Fantastic Four's back. You know, the classic days are back again. And, you know, what's one of the classic themes? Oh, Johnny is so vain. And, you know. Yeah, and we're fighting them all, man. Yeah. So, with this. And we didn't get money to buy robot monsters. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He found buried, oh, tri- got, like, found buried, buried treasure. I don't know. Days. Buried treasure. I, honestly, it, it gets to the point where you think, like, maybe, like, people just aren't digging enough on this planet. Like, maybe Roxton is really kind of too oil-focused. It's like... I was going to say, maybe, like maybe, maybe Mole Man found an oil... Diamonds just right under the ground. Like Maybe Mole Man found an oil deposit. <gasps> Charlie, yes, sir. Write that story. Mole Man's, like, the new version yes. of, like, a Saudi prince. He has, like, all this oil. So, like, the U- U.S. government and everyone has to deal with him because he has all this oil or something. You know what? There's actually a very strong scientific argument for that because oil... One of the hardest things about oil is that a lot of the oil is actually very deep in the ground because oil is a liquid. So it flows down. So once there's a crack in the rock, it all goes down deeper in the earth and deeper in the earth. So the deeper you go, the more oil you find, but it's hard to get that deep. Plus, aren't there? Are, isn't oil basically the remains of like dead dinosaurs and stuff? And it's actually the remains of dead plankton. Dinosaurs haven't been dead long enough for them to actually. Uh, but I was gonna say. But, I mean, I, mean, it, I yeah. mean, if there was monsters on Monster Island in prehistoric times, maybe their remains became oil. Maybe he's sitting on like Wakanda sitting on all that vibranium. Maybe Mole Man sitting on a ton of oil. Eh, it's entirely possible. Uh, yeah, but no, that that's just a common misconception about the dinosaur oil connection. I mean, maybe like a dinosaur bone because you what you you might find dinosaur bones in oil deposits, but they're it's like the actual. But what actually becomes is carbon carbon that's been like 
left for all right Falcon. all right yeah. the mole man don't found give the, me the nod it's like mole, you're the, dirty mole, the mole man found the remains of a bunch of dead plankton whatever he's underground he can find <laughs> it. exactly so he got some money somewhere um bought himself some killer robots because that's what you do it's like oh i've got enough money to have anything i ever wanted i'm gonna build giant robots because <laughs> who's writing this bend this <laughs> Well, I, no, I, 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 I Marvel's yeah. immune has 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 a bendis immunity. Right I now. know, but no, I just took it as like Mole Man was basic in his eyes. He was discarded by hum by the human race, and then he found all these friends and the monsters and the moloids, and now they kind of turned away from him. So he's like, I need my yeah, monsters he's not back. A very nice person. What you know? He's not a very nice person. Well, no. You know, I mean, well, that's the thing. It's like he's always like, "Oh, everyone rejects me." It's like maybe it's just because you're a jerk, Harvey. Maybe you're just not a nice person, Harvey. Isn't that isn't that like basically his whole thing is like you know people have mocked me. I can't find a woman. Uh, these monsters yeah. are my friends. Except they're not. They're, they're they're literally monsters that he just had the ability to control. They're basically <laughs> they're basically like strays. He fed them, and now they're like, oh, they keep coming back every night. You know. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, that's essentially it. And it is it is going back to Miles Warren, the idea of, oh, it's people that will do what I say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, oh, Marvel Knights, which you turned me on to. Apparently what Doom is doing is like, uh, I will control the world by making everyone forget, or I will let people know who what, what they do. And Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's about wanting that sycophantic world of mind-controlled slaves. It's... It lo only looks good if you don't recognize humans as humans to start with. Is that the basic overlying theme of a supervillain? It's not, you know, trying anymore trying to conquer the world. It's like, I can't have interpersonal relationships, so I will control people and make them conform to my version of interpersonal relationships. Yeah, except for except for the wizard. Because for him, he's the one guy who is... It's always just about, no, I don't want to control the world. I don't think I'm better than anyone else. I just want to win. I just want to win the game. The, the answer to every question, people, was either Otto Octavius or the wizard. They're the best! You know? <laughs> Otto doesn't want to take over the world either. He just wants money! He wants money! He wants the money. And Anna Marie. And Anna Marie, well, you know. And call me a hero. Yes. And, you know, he'd like to be considered a hero. You know what? Hey, I mean, hey, I hey! Another person who paid off supervillains, he paid off the night shift. Well, like, yeah, you're, yeah. You're on my payroll. As a quit, quit rampaging. You're on my payroll now. Yeah, well, but that's the thing. He did it as a villain. You know, as a villain, it's perfectly in his, acceptable. In his eyes, he was a hero. Well, he's being a hero. And and not for nothing, he's also not like a, he's not also not quell. When the little kid says, my daddy's rich and I'm going to buy you. It's actually a really awful, awful yeah. Awful way to phrase the, the situation. When a rich guy says, look, I'll pay you, and and not for nothing, not for nothing, that doesn't actually work because obviously you're not going to pay them enough to where it's worth it to them to sacrifice their, their um, integrity as a hired criminal. And more to the point, usually the hired criminal, the, per the criminal who hired the hired criminal will then hire other hired criminals to go after the hired criminal that took the better deal. It's like, it, from a business perspective, it's not a good plan. No. So, and again, like I said, having a 12-year-old girl do it just didn't work. Or 14, I don't know how old she's yeah, supposed to be. I know. The age up, who knows. But Yeah, well, she's supposed to be interested in boys, but I still think we're supposed to think of her in a non-sexual way. Like, yeah, there's not, good. like... She's like still in a romance attraction, she's not a puppy attraction. puppy love. Like, yeah, maybe yeah, she's like twelve love, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, with some prince of some other, with the the prince of the Avatar pastiche. Yeah. Did you World. did you did you see uh, next week? Uh, I guess the Fantastic Four wedding special comes out. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. It's nice to see. I want to see if they have, if they invite puppy. I want to see if Puppet Master gives her away. I want to see if Sharon Ventura shows up. <laughs> Charlie. She might, you know. Yeah. You know, I don't think. I think she's got. I think she's moved beyond Ben. I know, but is she still? Well, of course, she's a there. wanted criminal. So who knows? I mean, I don't know what the. the I mean, I, I mean, it would be nice if they give her like the freaking think serum that lets you be human for a day. Mm. That's actually the real thing. 
I want to see if he says, oh, there's one other thing. This one day you I get to be human. And he drinks this serum and he becomes human for the day. Oh, is he going to say that for the honeymoon? Well, you had the honeymoon after the wedding, so yeah. Well, no, yeah, no, 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 that's what I'm saying. Would he rather, he'd probably rather be human for the honeymoon than the actual, the actual ceremony. Yeah. And you know what? I think Siren Ventura may have a similar psychological block about being human. And I think that telling her that there's a serum that'll let you be human for one day. And so you might see her there as a human. And then it'll be, so here's what I'll tell you. If you see her at the start of the book in human form as Sharon Ventura, then you're going to know that that's going to be the end of the book. That, oh, and then he says, don't worry, I have the serum in one day a year. So someone's going to say, wait a minute, why only one day a year? And they obviously want things the same length of time. And okay, okay. Wait a minute. Okay, I oh, we're going long, but. I was thinking oh, about we this. Are? I'm sorry. Well, no. Well, I was thinking about this the other day too. It's like, okay, wasn't Ben Grimm's mental block that he couldn't transform back and forth is because he was afraid Alicia only loved him as the thing and he would lose her. Well, they're getting married. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he's. Not, I mean, yeah, there's divorce, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to lose her. Shouldn't that mental block kind yeah. of be breaking but down? Only one day a year. One day a year for the uh, making baby stuff, and then. <laughs> But no, I mean, not for nothing. No, well, it's, here's the thing. It's it's Ben's mental block. Yeah. And, ben, and that's actually not even about Alicia. That's actually this thing. It was originally about Alicia. Really, my theory is, is that it's much more about him not wanting to give up being the thing. That the power of being the thing is too much. And what he actually fears is that if he separates his thing and his Ben persona, he's going to be like Bruce Banner. Yeah. Where he sees that is, where it becomes another, mm-hmm. and he doesn't want to be have an other. He wants to be one person, and if he has to choose what one person he Ben Grimm the thing because it's, he's super strong. Mm-hmm. That's cool, and also resistant energy and lives forever and all that. Yeah, I, and so it's no longer just about Alicia, but that was that was like the very surface answer at the start. Okay. but the actual real reason is is I think he fears losing his humanity. Okay. okay, I'm sorry, Phil. We ran long, and Lilith is saying, I have stuff to do, too. <laughs> no, she hasn't said anything. Anyway, let's uh, call it a night. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Do you have something else you want to bring up? Or? No, that's good. No. We didn't talk about this, but it was cool. Gwynpool's in it. and that's Oh, yeah, Spider-Man. Up. Spider-Man Deadpool, yeah. Mommy? Yeah, and the writers won't let him see, won't let him know Spider-Man's secret identity. Oh, I know. That was really, like, breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> Well, where is that? I thought he actually... Well, I guess he... Oh, oh! He knows Spider-Man's history. He doesn't know his secret identity. Maybe. Because he's mentioned stuff from, like, Peter Parker's past. I think he's even mentioned Aunt May in the past. Or is that a mental block? Does he really know, but his his conscious mind won't let him know? Or at least the writers won't let him know. Yeah. Or the writers won't let Peter Parker let him know. uh, is he really breaking the fourth wall, or is he just that crazy that he thinks he is? Yeah, and if well, he finds yeah. out Spider-Man's secret identity, that's going to put the truth to the, to the lie that he actually is breaking the fourth wall. Yes, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's he's in a, he's in a rough spot. Um, <laughs> but I love that Gwenpool had a cameo, and now that means that Gwenpool can can like come back into that thing because she can, and they actually make the point she can go future further in the books when it's allowed. Yes. I said, oh, the writers let me do it. So if she comes back like next issue, I said, oh, the writers let me show up. Next uh-huh. issue, they're in the negative zone. Yeah. Well, I mean, she can go there because it's because they closed it with the negative zone. So mm-hmm. she was in the books. They close it with the negative zone. She can get to the negative zone whenever she wants. See, there they are in the negative zone, which means it's an eyeless controlling bugs or Blastar. Blaster doesn't control bugs and animals. But he's in the negative zone, isn't he? Yes, but you have to look at what the modus operandi is. Oh, bugs. Yeah. 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 Come on, work with me, Philip. I know. Okay. I know. Uh, Philip, how can people reach you if they'd like to explain comic books to you? All right. If you want to get a hold of me, you can always email me, nightwingpdp at gmail.com. On Twitter, I am at nightwingpdp. And check out Capes and Lunatics. Check out Nuff Said, where the show also now appears. And uh, mm-hmm. any feedback, just send it 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And what about the Not Enough Said podcast? <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
The creature of oh, trust, Charlie Esther. Don't play God. <laughs> oh, anyway. You know, I think the guy who does the Quasar podcast mentioned the Quasar podcast. So I think it is an established role. But I asked him to do that. He didn't, like, do it himself. Oh, <laughs> yeah, everyone, everyone, every, yeah, everyone's, uh, copy and will. Yeah. Well, we all, well, because apparently it's, that's what the kids today like. Lil loves the it. Kids I, like those traps. Must be. Lil loves it. Yeah. Anyway, well, she's, a, she's the youngest person I know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, besides his children. If you'd like to recommend it, old-fashioned email, way the way Did you give me your social media already? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks for me the old fashioned way to wear your once said at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. Of course, follow me on the Twitter. This is a live tweet, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is coming back, and Token Dagger, and uh, Gotham, which I'm really looking forward to. Oh, and there's a new, like, powerless but not powerless that's damage control but not damage control. Yeah. It's like it's like its own universe, but it's the people. At, uh... CW. Anyway, yeah. we'll, we'll see. That could be like the biggest thing ever. You watch. It's like going to be its own universe. It's like, we've created our own universe. Uh, anyway, you can watch those shows with me at Charlie S. That's C H A R L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing. There you go. And thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for connecting with us. Please super connect with us once again next week. Good night. Good night. You don't know, they could be listening at night. And I should hope they have a good night, no matter what time of day it is. I was going to say, yeah. It's still in the morning. They should have a good night. And if it's at night, then have a good morning, you know. This is Paul Harvey. Good night. Good, good day. <laughs> I miss Paul Harvey. He's dead. <laughs> I miss Stan Lee. He's dead. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are dead. In fact, there's more people... Actually, no, there's actually more people alive than dead right now. Hmm. That was an interesting mathematical theory that's going to come up with. Ah, I got you.